It is uh, was it 5:29 Central Standard Time? That's where I'm at in Missouri. It started out at uh, uh, Louisville, Kentucky area, and uh, in an hour and 27 minutes, I'll be done for today because that's about as far as I can drive. Uh, it seems like I drive most days. I'm I'm working 12. Um, 12, 13 hours. I got a new shirt. It seems kind of bright. I wanted to get something where I didn't have to wear my typical uh, orange vest, um, which gets tangled up a lot. And uh, but I thought this this shirt was going to be a thinner material than what it is. So on, in really hot areas, it probably won't work for me. I'll have to go to I'll have to go to a store and find some lighter or thinner material. Um, I'm on my a 30 minute break so I can keep driving oh, done four, 490 miles already today and I've been on my 30 minute break for 8 minutes right now so I'll, I'll get another 90 miles in so it'll be about 580 not too bad somebody asked um, about the electronic stuff I have in my truck so this is what this video is going to be titled, titled is the stuff in my truck or something like that. I covered my uh, auto shift in one particular video. My engine brake, somebody asked, is activated by this button right here that says engine brake. The setting on the engine brake is right here. I can be low, medium, or high. Wow, I need to dust. And then there's all these other buttons I rarely ever use. Uh, this one I use in the winter time because it defrosts my side mirrors. Keeps them from freezing up. And then the dome light, which is the main light overhead. Anyway, as far as electronics, I got a stereo that I can plug in my satellite radio. Um, this is a bungee because this radio is a piece of junk. <laughs> it wants to come off of the base is what I think it is. Um, constantly having to squeeze it on there and it still even now does not want to work correctly uh, the reason I, st I don't, don't get a new radio is because of this pause button you know because pause is awesome I have a Rand McNally uh, 730 LM uh, GPS system for commercial trucks uh, the main electronic device that we utilize is the Omnitrax which does our our books, or it covers our, <clears throat> excuse me, covers our hours, and all of that stuff, and it also um, home messaging talks to us every once in a while. We get messages. That's how we get our work assignments. We do our hours on here. There's a navigation system, which I did a video on this particular navigation system, built into the system, and uh, that I usually don't leave this page. What browser? But there's all this stuff too. If I wanted to really get into uh, what's going on, I can adjust the light, how bright it is, and the volume. Uh, the the last two items are this uh, this Wabco system. It it. Let's see. If I turn on the key, <clears throat> you'll hear a bunch of noise. Now we all have smartphones and don't pay for it. Sorry. As you can see, it's... The noise you hear is from this device right here. That's if I'm tipping, taking a corner too high. <clears throat> uh, this, it, it almost gives you a picture depicting of what this thing does. In the front of my truck is a sensor that sends out a beam. So when I'm driving down the road, somebody within 400 feet of me, I can see how fast they're traveling and how far away from them I am. And I think that assists my cruise control because my cruise control will automatically uh, uh, slow down or speed up to the maximum speed I have set depending on the traffic in front of me. 
So if there's somebody that uh, pull, you know, I'm traveling at 65 in a 65 mile an hour zone and somebody passes me and then all of a sudden pulls over in front of me and slows down, um, it'll automatically um, slow the truck down. Or if somebody's merging onto traffic while I'm traveling on my cruise control and they're not up to highway speeds yet, uh, the truck will slow down automatically by itself if I don't do it myself. Um, but it also maintains, when you set your cruise control, um, uh, I guess an automatic following distance, um, which is the safe distance um, for commercial trucks. Um, so if I'm doing 65 and somebody in front of me is doing 64, this will keep me at the safe space even though I'm not traveling as fast as I would like to. So usually those guys... <clears throat> if somebody's traveling so much slower than me that I can see the difference, then I go ahead and um, do a pass. But, um, yeah, so this uh, gives me a bunch of information, but it also works with other systems for safety features. Uh, another system, probably by the same company, because it says Wabco. Um, this is just a, um, a tire pressure system. Um, if my... Yeah, it won't work right now, even though the key's on. Uh, once you put it in drive and release the brakes, I can um, read the tire pressures of the truck, not the trailer, because the trailer tires are automatically filled to the appropriate pressure um, through the trailer air supply. So that's always good. Um, but for the truck itself, this will show uh, like a picture of the truck. You'll have two tires two and two and you can read out the uh, tire pressures um, uh, while you're driving it'll um, or once you have it in drive you can see the tire pressures and cycle through it um, lights come on when uh, something happens like hey this will flash when you've got a slow leak hence the turtle um, and it will um, automatically because usually the display is empty like this while you drive <clears throat> But if there's an issue, it'll display the truck and it'll blink the tire that's having the issue. And either it has a slow leak or a um, tire pressure that is not optimal. And you can hit your tire pressure gauge to see what, what the actual pressure of the tire is. So you can determine, hey, I need to pull over. Or, hey, I need to go to a station to, to fill up air in that particular tire. Or as what happened when I blew out my uh, left side uh, drive tire. Um, Everything started flashing and and um, let me know that yes, your tire is gone. So that's about the extent of my electronics. This device they put in, um, I want to say about a year ago. It's a, uh, um, I can't remember the exact terminology of it right now. That uh, it helps you by letting you know if you've. Um, crossed over the lines in the road. Um, the only reason you should cross lines in a road is if you've turned on your blinker to institute a turn or a maneuver into that lane. Otherwise your truck will think, hey something may be wrong and they put in these uh, a speaker up there and a speaker over here. So depending on which side of the truck I'm crossing the lane, um, it sends out noises. Uh, to let you know you're crossing the line <clears throat> for truck drivers and it's just basically a safety feature and this button exists so you can turn it off for a short period of time so if you're going through construction and you don't want to because you know when you go cons through construction and they've repainted road lines and there's just road lines everywhere well this system doesn't know that so you'll hear s sounds go off like crazy um, so you can uh, deactivate the system, and I want to say it's like uh, uh, like five minutes, something like that, and um, that'll prevent it from uh, making uh, or alerting you of lane change um, while you're driving through construction. But otherwise, that's what that does, and that's the that is the extent of the electronic uh, devices or equipment that I utilize in this truck um, 
I, I hope that answers uh, all the questions because there's uh, when I first got this I have a video of when I first arrived to this truck to this particular 2014 Freightliner Cascadia and I gave it kind of a quick tour and showed the back buttons and all that stuff so but for those that were questioning the all this electronic equipment that I have uh, that I deal with um, that's my explanation of it so I can't think of anything else that I need to cover right now somebody asked uh, how to do a you know I should do a video on how to do a, a regen um, of the engine but I've never had to do that so it'd be hard for me to explain because I've never done it so <laughs> if that day ever comes I'll be calling people to find out exactly how that's done um, but hopefully I don't have to do that um, my cruise control uh, are all on and off right here. Cancel, uh, accelerate and resume, decelerate and set. So I deal with this a lot. And here, uh, a marker interrupter light. So when I um, am pulling, uh, traditionally when truck drivers are pulling into the lane to their right after performing a pass or they're going around somebody, um, they'll turn on their uh, signal right, right turn signal indicator and uh, you know, as you do your mirror check, oftentimes truck drivers will either flash their lights or turn their lights off and then back on to let you know to go over. So a common courtesy is once you've finished your maneuver is to uh, hit your marker interrupter and that what that does is, you know, uh, interrupts the signal or the electricity going to your tail light so it kind of flashes the people that let you in so to say thanks. Again, that's my engine br brake. It just turns it on and off. There's a little green uh, light that shows up on the uh, dash when it's on. Uh, and this plus and minus sign is just to cycle through the different uh, uh, displays that are available on this particular truck. Uh, traditionally, I'm just looking at my leg to see how many miles I've currently traveled and how much time and how much fuel I've traveled during that particular uh, leg of the journey. But I can look at all kinds of stuff. So, so you can post your questions below. Uh, the, it's possibly going to be raining today. It's been rainy all day. Um, I'm not going to show the load because that's not what this video is about. Anyway, that's it for now. I'll be parked in uh, in about an hour and a half. Well, I guess I should say an hour and uh, 40 minutes from now because that's when my. 30 minute break will be up and I'll continue down the road so later